Is it time to fire your real estate agents? And why is it that there are so many bad real estate agents out there? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Brandon Peters. I'm a real estate agent here in Los Angeles County, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, hit the subscribe button down below as it does help grow the channel. For this video, I wanna to touch on three different topics. Why there are so many bad real estate agents out there, signs that it is time to fire your real estate agents, and how you can do so. So when I got my real estate license back in, I wanna say 2013, maybe it was 2014, it was a relatively quick process. It took me maybe four to six months from start of the day I started my real estate school to actually being a licensed real estate agent, I could go out and sell any home I wanted to. Not to mention the actual cost of getting my real estate license. I'm here in Southern California. It took me about maybe $1,000 to $1,200. So what does that mean? That means the barrier of entry isn't very high to get your real estate license. It takes a couple months for the you know Bureau of Real Estate to say you are qualified enough to be real estate agents and it doesn't take a whole lot of an investment on one's part to get the real estate license. They can do it for fairly cheap. In California, you know, a thousand bucks here, it's even cheaper in other states. So it doesn't take a whole lot to get your real estate license. A lot of people just get their real estate license to help out friends or family. A lot of them just do it as it's not a bad idea to have licenses for various different things. Okay, well, that doesn't quite answer the question. So it doesn't take a lot of money to get your real estate license. It doesn't take a lot of time to get your real estate license. Why do so many agents suck? A simple answer to that question is mentorship. There is not enough mentors, there's not enough training in this industry to help agents succeed. And a lot of the training that's out there is super dated. It's not even current. You go to a Keller Williams, you go to a Century 21, Remax, you know, whatever, you know, these other big brokerages, their training is not up to date. Their training is years behind what uh, is actually being done in the industry today. So the education is not there. There's not enough mentors. The agents that are out there, they're killing it. If they did get a mentor, you know, that's, that's what set them up for success. When I got in the business, I didn't. I thought I was too good for it. And guess what? A few years in the business, I almost had to get out because I sucked. I didn't know what I was doing. No one taught me. I didn't think I needed to be taught. And eventually I did get a mentor in 2017. That's when my career immediately went from a nosedive to straight up in the air. So being mentored by the, by, you know, to the DRE standards, that's not a requirement. You just need to pass a quick test and it takes you a couple months to, to study for it and that's it, you're, you're good to go. Mentoring is not, is, not a, uh, is not a requirement. Coaching, none of that. You just need to pass a test, you're good to go. So the simple answer to that question is there's just not enough mentorship and the education that's being taught at these big brokerages is dated. It is not current with today's standards. That simple. Before we get into the next topic, do you know how many homes the average real estate agent sells in a year? Let me know in the comments down below or stay till the end of this video. So is it time to fire your real estate agent? There's several different signs. We're gonna talk about the biggest ones that you guys need to keep in mind. Is there marketing crap? Meaning, does your house look like this on sites like Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, Realtor.com, or does your house look like this? How much do you think real estate photos cost? Let me know in the comments down below or stay till the end of the video. That is the very first sign is the marketing up to today's standards. Does your house look like the best house on the street when, the, when a buyer will see it on Zillow? Or are they gonna see those pictures and they're just gonna keep scrolling? Here's another one for you. Are you looking to actually buy a house? Is your agent sending you listings on a daily basis? Are they letting you know what new homes hit the market? Or are you sending your agent house after house after house asking for more information? Is your agent not taking the initiative to send you properties? Is your agent not even taking the initiative to call you and say, hey, are you available this weekend to look at property? Here's what I found. Is your real estate agent sending you properties on a daily basis? As soon as that sexy, amazing house hits the market that's the perfect house for you, are they on it? Are they sending it to you? Or are you finding it on your own, sending it to your agent three days after it's already been on the market and he tells you, sorry, they're fully booked. You're not gonna get a chance to see it anymore. That is crap. You should not be having to do that. That is why you hired that real estate agent to email you properties, letting you know about properties as soon as they hit the market. And here's the other one. Is your real estate agent taking the initiative to show you properties? Is he or she calling you, sending you text messages? Hey, what is your schedule like for this weekend? Are you available? I got this amazing property that just hit the market. I sent it to you this morning. I think it's the perfect house for you and your family. What's your schedule like for this weekend? We need to see this property. Or are you calling your agent and saying, are you available this weekend? Can you show me this property? And he says, I'm fully booked, don't have time to show you. That leads me on to the next point, guys. Does your real estate agent make you feel like a priority? Is he or she 
setting time aside to show you properties, to talk to you about properties, or whenever you reach out, hey, I wanna see this property, they say, I'm busy, I can't this day, bad week, whatever the reason is. They are not available when they need to be available. They're not available enough to service you. Whatever it is, they're not giving you the right amount of attention and you are losing out on properties because they are not giving you enough time to see these properties. They are not giving you the attention that you deserve. Now, what about communication? That is a huge one. When you're buying a house, you and your real estate agent, you two are a team. That communication needs to be on point. When you say, hey, I wanna see this property and they take two days to respond to you, that property could have all the showings booked by now. You won't get a chance to see it. Or is your real estate agent on top of it? Now, I'm not talking when you message your real estate agent at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. If they're not gonna respond to you, nothing's wrong with that. You're bugging them after business hours. Or if you call them at 6 a.m. and they don't answer the phone. That's reasonable. But when you're messaging them during business hours, hey, I saw this hot property, I really wanna see it, or you message them at night and they don't get back to you first thing in the morning, that's not okay. Your real estate agent needs, his, his or her communication needs to be on top of it, especially in this market. This market is super aggressive. You need an agent that's super on top of it and super aggressive as well. They need to make you feel like you are their only client. They should be, whenever you have a question, they need to be on it. Now, not saying again, the second you send that text that you should expect a response, but it should be a reasonable amount of time. If you reach out to them, you should be expecting to hear back the same day. I do understand certain things come up. Maybe he had, he's at the doctor's, whatever it is, he or she's at the doctor's. But just to make this crystal clear, 95% of the time, if you reach out to your agent, they should get back to you within one to two hours. That's it. They should be on it to get you into the properties or answer the questions that you have. Speaking of answering questions, that leads me to my next point, which is providing value and education. Guys, is your real estate agent just not telling you a whole lot about the process? Do you feel like, hey, I've been working with this real estate agent for a month and like, I still don't know how the escrow process goes or, or you know, you have some questions that aren't getting answered. Is your real estate agent providing you the right amount of value? Are they gonna turn you into a professional home buyer? That is the goal the day you close escrow that you know everything about the process, about the home buying process. You are now a professional home buyer. Your agent, your agent educated you on the process every step of the way. You know how the escrow process works. You know what to expect seven days in escrow. 15 days in escrow, 25, 30 days in escrow because your agent was there the whole step of the way and he, she was telling you about each step, about the process. Do you two feel, do you feel like you are getting that level of service, that level of education, that level of value? Are they explaining things to you in detail or are they giving you bare minimum? You don't know anything. You feel green, you feel lost. You should never feel lost in a transaction. Here's a tip for the real estate agents if you are watching this. If your client needs to reach out to you to ask you a question about how the escrow process works, you are not on top of it. That's it, point made. Next point. Does your agent do what they say? And that's a big one. That's one that I actually got caught in a lot of times. And it's one that a lot of us as realtors, we don't think about a whole lot. We're so quick to react that, you know, just so you guys as buyers, sellers knows, agents are very quick to react and they say stuff without necessarily really comprehending it or, or thinking about it before they say it. Like you have a question about a property or um, you wanna make an offer and they say, hey, I'll have it to you in 20 minutes. But you actually don't get that offer for maybe six hours. Or they say, hell yeah, I'll have that information to you by tonight and they don't send it over till tomorrow. Those are little minute details to pay attention to. I know they don't sound like they're, they're big, big things, but it's annoying. Somebody tells you they're gonna do something, they don't do it. Now, what else are they saying they're gonna do that they're not doing? in the time that they say they're gonna do it. Don't let that stuff slide. For whatever reason, maybe you just, you, you really like the agent, whatever it is. At the end of the day, no matter how much you like this agent, this is business. You're buying a house. Doesn't matter if it's your friend, doesn't matter if it's your family member that's even helping you. You expect a certain level of service. And when you say you're gonna do something, don't you do it? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we be providing that level of service to you as the consumer? Yes, when I say I'm gonna do something, I need to do it. And I, myself as the agent, have been called out by, by clients for, for not keeping my word. 
So that stuff doesn't go unnoticed. Don't let it slip, address it with your agent. Hey, you know what, you said you, you were gonna send this to me last night you know, never, never heard from you, what, what happened? The agent doesn't know it's a problem if you don't tell. Now, they shouldn't, you shouldn't have to, but you expect a certain level of service, so keep on them and make sure that they are working their ass off for you. So that's it, guys. Those are a few signs you need to look out for. Now, of course, there are hundreds of different reasons that I could list, but those are some of the biggest ones that really irk me and that stand out that I want you guys to keep in mind. So let's talk about the process of actually firing that real estate agent. Now, I'm here in California, so keep that in mind. It may be different in other states. If you were working with an agent to help you buy a house and they had you sign a buyer's agency agreement, one, you shouldn't have signed that in the first place. I've been in this business for what? What I say, uh, 2013, what is it? Eight years. I've never had one buyer's agency agreement signed. Not once. I believe it's my job as a real estate agent to earn your business day in, day out, day after day after day after day. Not just, you know, blow your mind away the first, second time you meet me, three, six months down the road when we're still working together, when we're still shopping for a house, I want you to still be as excited working with me as you were day one, day two of, of meeting me. I don't have you sign anything. If you're not interested in working with me anymore, hey, we have a handshake agreement. You be upfront with me and then go work with somebody else that's gonna do a better job. But if you guys need it, did sign that buyer's agency agreement, call the broker, tell them you're not happy with the agent that you're working with. Majority of the time, they will try and switch you onto another agent out of that office. Hey, that's not a bad idea. If you're not happy with that, just tell them. Now, most of them, you won't have any issues getting out of that agreement. Now, if you have your house listed and you wanna fire your real estate agents, it could be a little tougher. So you have an employment agreement for a set duration of time, right? Maybe you signed it for three months, maybe six months, 12 months, two years. I don't know why anyone would sign a two year listing agreement, but you know, it happens. Again, you would call the broker, tell them you're not happy with how things are going. You want to cancel your agreement, not have the house withdrawn. You want the actual listing agreement canceled. Now, again, they may try and turn you over to another agent out of the office. They, of course, don't want to let you go as a client. You didn't do anything wrong, right? So they want to try and keep your business still within the company, but turn you over to another agent out of the office. If you are okay with that, awesome. That's great. Say you want to see numbers of that real estate agent. What is that realtor producing to let you know that that agent is skilled? They sell 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 homes a year in your area you know you are getting a qualified agent or are they assigning you to somebody that it's gonna be the first house you ever sell. That's not gonna be a great experience. Sorry to new real estate agents, but you don't know as much as an agent who sells 100 homes a year. We can both agree on that, right? Now the next situation is that you don't want to relist with another agent out of that office. You just wanna be done with whatever company, brokerage you're with altogether. Ultimately, you did sign a contract for a set duration of time and they could say, no, you need to stay within this agreement. We can pull the house, withdraw it from the market, but we, we won't let you out of that agreement. I have ran into situations like that before where people were unhappy with their previous agent wanting to relist with a new agent like myself, but the new agent would not let them out of that contract. Every brokerage is different. I don't see that happen very often. A lot of the times, if you just want to fire your real estate agent, it won't be a problem. But unfortunately, some brokerages are not the nicest. What I would recommend, you find a real estate agent that you really like. You interview a real estate agent that you really like and you say, hey, I want to work with you. But here's the deal. My last agent will not let me out of that agreement. Maybe the new real estate agent can call your former agent, work out some type of referral agreement for you to relist with a new agent. I, you know what, maybe some real estate agents aren't gonna like hearing that, but that is something that could potentially help you. That is just my thought, that is just an idea that you can try. The, the next thing is you just gotta wait out that contract for whatever duration of time. Maybe it was a year, you gotta wait till the year is up before you could relist with another agent. So there's a couple different ways to go about it if you wanna get rid of the real estate agent you hired that you feel sucks. Sorry guys, I, there's a lot of crappy agents out there. Make sure before you hire a real estate agent, you do your due diligence, you know that you are hiring somebody that is a professional and knows their and knows their stuff. So that's it for this video, guys. I appreciate you hanging out with me and giving the video a listen. If you found value in it, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to get to know you guys and interact with you. And before you go, make sure to hit the subscribe button as it does help grow the channel. Until next time, I'm Brandon Peters and you guys have a great day.